Hey y'all, welcome back to the ranch. I'm Jared Paul, and it's a nice early morning sunrise over the pond, coming up over the mountain. And as you see, it is really cold, and all the snow has a nice icy glaze on top of it. Say good morning, Stella. <laughs> all right, so I was planning on doing a uh, another bonsai pruning video on my number one jade plant. It's probably my oldest bonsai, but I was looking at it, it just looks so luscious and amazing that I think I'm just gonna let it grow through the winter and then early spring. I'll give it a pruning before it gets too overcrowded. So I'm gonna show you that and give you an update on all the other trees here at the ranch. So that's what's coming up on today's episode of Jarhead Bonsai. All right, y'all, so starting in the um, nursery, we have some little palms, different plants that survive from the baby shower. You know, little zebra plants and things like that. There's a blue jacaranda that I pruned back hard. It was not doing that well, it wasn't growing nicely. And I'm really pleased with the bud back. So you see that thing has a nice sway. I never wired it. It just uh, worked out that way. I've got this little Delonyx Regia that popped up for us right in Stella's little flower box in her room. So that's pretty cool because that was, you know, basically my first bonsai and my favorite. And these are a bunch of cuttings of the last pruning I did on my major Delonyx. Uh, so hopefully those will survive. It is hard to, with all these windows, to get you a clear shot. Here's another blue jack, but this one I've just let grow because it was a bit healthier. So I said, let's get some size on that trunk this year. Exiting the nursery. Look at that nice little, uh, the name of it's evading me. But it was one of three plants that Laura gave me when she found out she was pregnant. So pretty cool. I've got this Cherimoya. I have two of these actually that I grew from seed, ordered from Portugal. It is a vine, a fruiting vine, and apparently the fruit is epic. I've never had one, but um, it interested me enough to order some seeds on Etsy and um, yeah, grown them. This year I just let them grow, which was pretty much the theme of most of my trees. As long as I kept them insect free, I let them grow, no pruning. Here's a planting of three blue jacaranda back there. It's hard to see uh, because it's also behind a planting of bamboo and pencil cactus and jade cuttings. There's three of each. As you can see, everything's growing really healthy and that's why you can't really see everything. All these spider plants, they're great for cleaning the air. Um, to me, they're not that exciting, but I bought four about five, six years ago, and they've turned into dozens and dozens and dozens. I've given them away as gifts. You know, people love them. So good accent plant. Um, but if I did have to replace anything if in need of space, it would be, you know, one of those in replacement with a tree. So this is the mother pencil cactus from uh, which all of my cuttings and different plants now have come from. You see it had nice gnarly knobby base to the trunk it's getting nice and woody so that's exciting growing out of the fireplace nice deep pot probably be another three years before i repot that so i had planned on doing a uh let me come around to the other side so i had planned on doing a video on pruning up this my first jade bonsai see it's getting nice and woody it's got divide into three and then each one of those divides and divides and since the canopy is so full and it just looks ex exactly how I'd want it to look you know at this point in time it's looking its best I'm going to reward it with letting it grow through the winter and then when it gets a little overcrowded I will um, I will do a pruning but for right now it's not getting leggy at all it's just uh, growing healthy from all the divides that it made after the last pruning. So there you go. That's your Jade video. <laughs> right around here, another Cherimoya. Once again, just kind of let it grow up. Uh, they've gotten one pruning before, a few years old. 
over the break, I did a lot of prunings on like my Chiffler cuttings and pencil cactus and all of my different jades. I've got a red gum here that looks leggy and crazy. And that's because I asked Aussie Bonsai Bloke for some advice because I just kept, uh, I kept losing whole branches anytime I pruned. And then, there must be a delivery here. Bruce Lee's going crazy. Anyways, um, and so he said, just let it grow big and strong and then, you know, eventually prune it and it'll respond better. And definitely don't prune it in the off season. They're finicky. So taking his advice, that's a local tree for him. I grew it from seed here, like most of mine. This actually came from Hawaii. Hawaii. This is a Shaflera grown on a lava rock. I am going to... Uh, get a better pot for it, more suited for it, and give it a cooler angle eventually, but a nice attraction is this hand-like root system clinging out to the lava rock, so very cool, in my opinion. It's a disaster of a yarn wiring. This is a Delonix Regia. I, I didn't do a very good job, but I'm thinking that if I could get some growth to pop out here, get it to follow the sun up, it might create a cool shape <laughs> after time. Uh, so this is the money tree that I broke up from a clump style because it just had no, nothing to it. Uh, it doesn't look like the cuttings are gonna survive back there. This was the featured tree going out to the side. So it's like something you would sit on walking down the beach on vacation. And this is a little clump of three in which, you know, one of them's dying itself. But if it will stay without rotting, I'll leave it as, you know, you see dead palm trees in the wild uh, in different clump settings, and they could actually be attractive even without any fronds on them. You know, some different succulents. These, been, these have been pruned off camera just until they get to be you know, somewhat interesting, and then I'll put together some videos on those. Bamboo, some more Chiflera and Jades, pencil cactus trio there. My aloes have gone absolutely insane there and over here. This is a double aloe. So I hear so many great things about the health benefits, both nutritionally and for um, your skin. That We might do some harvesting and prune. I really have to think about what I want to do with that. I love it right now, but it just takes up so much room. Got a couple pencil cactus here, the original cuttings. Have them in kind of like a medium sized tree, and now I'm trying to build up the canopy up here. This is the prized Delonix Regia that received ex an extremely hard pruning uh, on its fourth year of growth, and it's coming in nicely. You can see it butted back if you watch that video. If you haven't and you have one, I would check it out. This is one that's a couple years younger. And so its root system isn't as strong. So as you see, it's coming back out, budding back nicely, but this one is just strong and way ahead. This Hoya has really taken off. It started as a single heart and now it's got multiple veins or branches and tons of these hearts looking cool, just hanging up there. The Queen of the night, if you recall, I pruned it back extremely hard. This is all new growth here, here, a bunch of different leaves. So I know that we're going to get some nice flowers this year. And if you don't know about the queen of the night, it's this mystical Southeast Asian plant and uh, it blooms one night out of the year. And the blooms are like six inches big. It's, it's epic. Um, so yeah, and even the cuttings, they responded very well to that so they're growing out nicely and i just have them in some perlite and water in a vase pineapple guava forest this will probably get repotted this year i love the color of that bark really nice uh, some jade cuttings uh, you know i just Basically defoliated, did a little bit of pruning, but let them come back. I'd like to get them woody before I really give them a design. Some baby cuttings. This is the Norfolk Island Pine Forest. 
I had two clumps um, that needed to be repotted and I didn't like them. So I planted them in this forest and gave them their first hard pruning. Got them in some nice bonsai soil. So there isn't anything growing back yet, but they look healthy and they aren't, they aren't like drying up and dying. So that's a good sign. So I'll keep you posted on them. All right, coming back over here. You see all these child seats. This is the walker. We got the mat over there. <laughs> um, anyways, <laughs> baby takeover. Um, so here, planting a cigar box. This is one of my favorite non-bonsai plantings. This is a zigzag cactus. And... This thing was tiny when I got it, and it has just taken off like crazy. It's all the way down, down here. And the reason why I have the Queen of the Night right under it, they're kind of interconnecting right now, but when I water this guy, it leaks directly down into the Queen of the Night. Otherwise, it goes everywhere because the cigar box is not conducive for watering, nor do I want to keep pulling down a hanging plant. So let's get a good angle of this. This is finally turning yellow, lem my lemon tree, in a little window box style terracotta pot. You see, getting some fruit. Well, I have plenty of fruit, it's just finally turning yellow. And these are the largest they've ever grown in. So I was, I was looking at this tree going, okay, you know, after it's done fruiting this spring, I'll probably prune it. And from afar, there's fruit and it's a nice pot. And, you know, I did some work with the landscape and, but it is a total <laughs> disaster. There is not like one branch coming out of the trunk that, I don't know, it comes out at a good angle. It's just, it's gonna be rough. So I'm gonna have to look at that all winter and figure out a plan because it needs some work. <laughs> all right we'll probably just have to finish inside and then i'll have to do a part two of outside in the basement trees so this is a poinsettia that i've had for a few years now and i put it in the basement right around christmas to get it to turn red and then i brought it back up so i like how it's got the lighter green leaves and then the red up top nice little accent plant um, this guy was attacked by mealybugs. Caught a video on that about a month, month and a half ago. And as you see, they're all coming back strong. That's a succulent forest of three that's designed to be like, um, like a maple, a pine, and a little bush, you know. So, anyways, this is my pathos. More spiders. See, these little babies, if you don't know, you get these little spiderettes. And you could clip that off, set it in a little cup of water, it'll grow roots. You plant it and you eventually will have that one growing. Things like this, like in a year, two years, it's insanity. I've got the pathos here. Coming down the refrigerator, going up the walls over there. I've lost some leaves this winter. It's probably natural. Down <laughs> and around. And it comes out all the way to there. So that's fun. Oh, and it's up above the stove. All right, so I'm going to end part one there. Um, yeah, let's get outside. Check out the frosty north. I'll show you all of the uh, cold hardy trees that I have overwintered, and then we'll get down into the basement and uh, check out the less cold hardy trees, the maples and things of that nature that I have down in the basement for the winter. So that's what's coming up on the next episode of Jarhead Bonsai. But for now, I'd like to say uh, cheers to y'all. And I uh, hope you and your family are having a great New Year. Cheers.